Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode episode 85. Um, Wednesday afternoon, uh, Wednesday evening. I was gonna say afternoon. <laughs> I do not do podcasts in the afternoon. I do them in the evening. Anyway, so it's Wednesday evening. Came outside. Um, nice night. Another nice night. Um, Yesterday it rained a lot. Um, seemed to have cleared the air um, quite a bit. Really nice day today. Nice and cool. I'm outside with the dog. Just uh, getting a little air while I talk to you guys. Everything is same old, same old. Um, nothing new. No, uh, no new calls. Um, working on the book, um, might have a little delay in, uh, manufacturing. I got a notice from Amazon, so I'll see what that is about. I'll wait till I'm, I'm done. I'm supposed to upload it on March 27th, which is the day after tomorrow. Once I upload it, they'll let me know what the deal is at that point. I kind of expect it to be delayed. I mean, uh, I don't think anybody's working in the in the plant. It, it just makes no sense, um, and that's fine. It'll give me a few extra days to uh, just um, get get a few uh, loose ends tied. Um, um, other than that, uh, same old, same old. Uh, people are talking about um, uh, this. Um, what do they call it? The check that um that uh, everyone's supposed to get uh like twelve hundred dollars per person twenty four hundred dollars uh for a family is it something like that uh i mean any little any little bit right now helps so i'm sure a lot of people would appreciate that um it, it, i won't i won't send it back <laughs> um but uh, I, you know, I try to, I try to think about that. You know, talking about all these people in this country, and they're sending out twelve hundred dollars per person. I guess per working person. That's a lot of freaking money, man. That's a lot of money. I don't know. I don't really follow the news. I don't really know what the what the stipulations are. Um, and is it a loan? Is it? I'm hearing that it's like a loan, like it's either they deduct it from your taxes or you have to pay it back. I've heard a couple of different things. I don't know. I'll let, I'll let Angel uh, deal with that. In the meantime, I try to take care of what I'm doing. If I get too bogged down into thinking about these things, it just it makes me unproductive and I need to stay moving. I need to I need to stay productive. Um, really, really itching to get done with. Uh, yes, yes, y'all. I have. A couple other really cool projects that I want to get started, but this takes up so much time. This takes up so much time that uh, we have to um, that I have to focus. I can't um, I can't uh, what you call it. Uh, I can't take on like another project, not like that, not a, a writing project. I really need to uh, uh, absorb myself when I'm uh, when I'm doing that. Um, yeah, you heard Coco was uh, just walking. Of course, there was someone, someone who came outside. It's 11 o'clock right now, so who the hell's coming out at this time? But, uh, yeah, as far as the show's happening, uh, man, it's like, <laughs> like you don't even want to call the promoters at this point. It's like, what do you, you know, what do you call? I know I have um, the Pride show happening in June. Uh, we will still have to get flights and hotels and stuff, so... 
I gotta play that one by ear. See how we're gonna how we're gonna handle that. That's gonna be uh let me see what they say. April, May. I don't know. I don't know. It's hot, guys. Difficult, difficult uh situation right now, you know, with this. You know, it's hard to hard to plan. I'm not really worried about anything. I'm really not. Um pretty much covered, you know. Bills are covered. Anything that we might fall behind is uh, not even going to sweat it at this point. You know, I'm not the only one. So other people are going through the same situation. Uh, Yep. Concerned with my daughter still, you know. I'm just hoping, you know, that's a sticky situation there. That's real sticky. You know, you think... Okay, so she she joins the military. I'm like, okay, you know what? She works in a hospital. I mean, she's good. She's, you know, even though she doesn't care, she's like, she'll go to combat. But she's not going to see combat as far as that's just not the, pos- the position that she's at. If I mean, she they call her for combat. I mean, she's trained for it. But um, there has to be some serious stuff going on for her to be called to combat, you know? So you think, okay, well, you know what? She's working in the hospital. She's good. She's not on the front line. You know, you feel safe. She's, she's, you feel good because she's safer pretty much than anybody else. <laughs> and then this happens. And now they're talking about, you know, medical workers are the ones on the front line. How crazy is that? You know? Is that nuts or what? Um, would never in my life. And then she's in another country. So, you know, God forbid uh, something goes down. It's like, what do you do? I can't get in a plane. I can't go out there, you know. So, I just, I mean, all we could do at this point is pray. Like, everybody's in the same boat. We're watching these numbers triple and quadruple, you know, the death rate. Everybody's trying, you know, I watch, I try to watch some of the positive stuff. Sometimes you get the doctors that come in, they start talking about, uh, you know, more deaths happen, happen from obesity, more uh, because of, um, they're talking about, you know, one point something million a year get killed from car accidents. But since there's less people driving, that that number's going to decline. Uh, so, I mean, people are trying to, you know, shed a, a, a bright light on the situation. And I appreciate that. That's, we can all use that, you know. Last thing we need is a, a world full of uh, panic or, you know, just people losing it. We don't need that at this point. You know, I come outside, the air feels fresh. It's a beautiful, beautiful, clear night. I mean, Wow, I haven't seen so many stars in a very long time. So the sky is very clear with a lot of stars in the sky. And um, everything seems perfect. Everything right now in the world seems perfect, but it's not. It's not perfect. There's a problem. And it's hitting everybody. You know, rich poor, they're talking about uh, Prince Charles now contracted the virus and um, and it's crazy because there's a YouTube out, I don't know if you guys have seen it but there's a video that's out that's um, there's a video that's out that shows him getting, uh, Prince Charles getting out of a car, right <laughs> and he goes to greet he goes to greet the people who um, who uh, who um, who he came to see, and uh, they they put out their hand to shake it. He put out his to shake it, and he does uh, he doesn't shake it. <laughs> he pulls his hand away, you know, like to say, "Oh no, no, we can't do that," you know. So um, uh, it's crazy. And then you see him do that a couple of times. He did that so twice, and then uh, uh, and then you hear that he got that, you know. But, you know, think about it. You know, he's shaking hands with everybody. You know? How crazy is that? You know? 
Maybe he thought that, you know, he couldn't get it because he was the prince, you know? So, but, um, yep. Crazy situation, folks. Um, that's pretty much the deal. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Stay safe, stay indoors. That's what we've been doing. We've been staying in, I mean. Uh, no reason to come out, find anything. I had to go get gas and run to the store uh, yesterday. But we came right back in, you know. And uh, I'm not trying to be out there. I'm not trying to go against any rules. If that's the advice they're giving us, well, I want to I wanna stick to that advice, <laughs> you know. Last thing I need is, is this crap. So, But uh, it's pretty much it for tonight, guys. Uh, not much more to, to talk about except the same thing that you guys already know. Nothing's different. Same thing here. Same thing I'm seeing, you're seeing, you know. But um, uh, looking forward to getting back to work. I don't know if you've seen my latest TikTok called I'm Bored in the House. <laughs> I'm really not bored. <laughs> I'm really not. Uh, everybody's talking about bored. People see me putting the videos out there like, man, you must be bored. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> it takes a lot for me to get bored, you know? I haven't been bored in years, so uh, there's always something, especially if you're a writer. If you're a writer, you're never going to be bored because no matter what, you're going to sit down and write. And that could take hours and hours, and mentally it brings you, takes you on a journey. It puts you in another world. You know, so you kind of live in a life outside of uh, outside of your home. You know, I have a meme that I created. It's a, it's a quote. <clears throat> I think it says, uh, um, "I live but one life, but when I write, I live many." And um, that was a quote that I came up with, and uh, uh, it's it, it's true. It really is, you know. It's hard for people to understand if they're not writers because when you write, you're not really sitting there writing a story. You, you're you in the story. You're a part of the story. You're writing stuff that you're feeling. You're, you're writing stuff that you see, that you smell, that you feel, you know. So, uh, you know, so you, you, you literally... I can't say literally. That's stupid. Um, but you actually... You're, you're part of this story. You're part of this whole entire world. And when you, when you write and you you engulf yourself, you just kind of like. I remember writing to a point when I was writing Freestyle for Life. I remember writing to a point where certain situations that were happening, I was actually conf- I was becoming I was getting confused because I was talking to people. And since I was so into writing the book, it was weird. I was coming up with, I was adding things that were happening in the book into my conversation like it really happened. Sound crazy, right? (laughs) I remember when this was happening and I never told anybody. And I would just stop talking and think and say, hold up, wait. You know, and I have instances where I don't remember whether something that happened was actually a part of my real life or it was something that I wrote that's how crazy it gets you know anyone who who writes especially if you're doing fiction if you're doing fiction um you're you're writing you're coming up with these crazy ass stories that's what I love about fiction is the fact that I can make my characters do anything and believe it or not a lot of a lot of my characters or they do things that maybe I wish I, I would have done. I'm not talking about the crazy shit like murdering people or... No, I'm not talking about that, you know? I'm talking about... I'm talking about, you know... I'm sorry, guys. There's people out here in their trucks coming by. I thought he was going to stop and say something. Um, but I'm talking about... Uh, Situations that I, I create 
would really be, you know, things that I would have said or I would have done had I been in that situation. I'll tell you another thing is my first character, Solo, um, is raised by just his mother. My character of uh, Layla Storm in my book, Feastow, is his road, ma- her road manager is her father. Okay? Single parent. And the character now, his name is Ray, in my books, Yes, Yes, Y'all, is raised only by his grandmother. Now, how crazy is that? Now, I didn't sit there and do this. Those are the relationships that I understand. Now, the reason why I wrote the character Layla Storm to be with um, her father, even though and it's a bit of a spoiler if you haven't read the book, uh, because I won't let you know it's her, it's her father till later on. But it's not. It's what happens within it that uh, would be a big spoiler. So telling you that isn't a big deal. But I wasn't raised by my father. I was raised by a single mother. However, I was <laughs> before I got with Angel. I was basically a single father. So it was basically me and my son or me and my daughter, you know, me and my daughter. Um, So these characters, and I didn't do it purposely, it's just the way they came about. These are the relationships that I understand and I'm able to write these. Now, I have yet to write a story where there's a father and a mother. Now, I will. I will eventually. But what's so crazy is that, like, I have another story in my head that I'm working on. I build a lot in my head. But what's so crazy is that that character also only has a mother. And I didn't realize this until right now, until I'm bringing this up to you guys. That that character for the new book um, that I'm working, you know, I've, I already have pieces. I have a pieces of about eight books. So that's how I write. <clears throat> but the character only has his mother. That's it. So, um, so it's, cra- it's crazy. Now, I didn't do it purposely. Like I said, it's just the way it's coming out because... That's how I know how to communicate. That's the relationship that I have, either me with my children. Because Feast Out is um, third person. So it's me talking about two people. Freestyle for Life is first person. It's, it's me as, as one of the characters. You know? Be quiet. Come here. It's me as one of the characters. So, Alexa, guys, he's she's acting up. Stop. She's acting up. So, um, I'm gonna shut it down right now. Anyway, I appreciate everything. You guys be cool. Until tomorrow. Good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.